In our latest tutorial on rendering, I walked you through lighting, shading, and rendering this cocktail glass with a splash. And of course you guys asked, how did you do the splash? And as this is not rendering related, I thought, well, let's talk this through. Disclaimer, I usually don't really work with fluid simulations. So lots of the techniques you're seeing here might not be the quote unquote proper or standard way of working with this. So I'm more than happy if you guys let me know if there is a better way of doing stuff. Just let me know in the comments. That being said, let's go and walk you through setting up this fluid simulation. First thing we're going to need is the cocktail glass itself. And I provided you with the file. So let's just drop down a file node there, dive in there and select that file, which loads up this cocktail glass, which is almost real world scale. I think it's a bit too big, but that doesn't matter. And the first thing I want to do is from this cocktail glass, create a volume in here that's filled with liquid. To do that, let's just drop down a null here, append this, call this one out go up one level and drop down another geo node in which we're going to set up the whole simulation. And let's call this thing splash dive in there. As I mentioned, first thing I want to do is create a volume for the liquid. For that, I'll just get my glass using an OBJ merge merging in the glass geometry in this other node here, like so. Next, I want to select only this interior area here, which I'll then close to create a volume. To do so, I'm just going to go into the side view by hitting space and three and going to my selection cursor, selecting the points here using just a rectangular selection, maybe selecting those points, making sure to uncheck select groups or connected geometry. And now I can select those points here, hit delete to blast those points, which will enter a group of points here to blast. And I'll just copy over the original group that I had in my original setup to make sure it's perfectly the same. So that's this. And now I also want to blast this outside of the glass here which can be done again by using the selection cursor, selecting primitives, which are connected in 3D space. So that allows me to just click on this group, hit delete again, append a second blast and end up with only this interior surface here, which we're now going to close using a polyfill, which will append and let's set the fill mode here to a single polygon ending in this. Now, if I pipe this into a simulation, it's going to collide and going to result in errors around these areas here where there might be intersection. So let's scale this a bit smaller using a transform, append this, hitting move centroid to origin to center this geometry around the origin and then translating it back by nulling out the translates to its original position. And by this making sure we are now scaling around its center point. I scale it a good bit smaller to 0.85 and this is going to be our liquid. Next, I'll need an ice cube that I'm going to drop in there. I'm going to create that using a simple box, which I'll scale down a good bit to 0.04 and move it up to say 0.4 and maybe rotating it a bit as well like this. Just some position that I liked originally. Now, when we highlight this, we can see it's got these sharp edges. So let's get rid of them using a poly bevel, beveling the edges a bit, say around 0.005 units. And when we go down here, increasing the division a bit. So we're getting subdivisions resulting in this very geometric, but for now, fine ice cube. Let's also create a collision volume. So a collider, because in the simulation, I'll have to collide the ice cube as well as the liquid with this glass here. And I found it most reliable to just create a VDB from polygons, piping in this glass in there, and then scaling down the voxel size to 0.001. So we end up with this collision geometry of the glass. Okay, I think we're ready to build the simulation by dropping down a dop net in here and wiring in first our liquid source here, then our collision geometry with the glass here, then the ice cube, and finally our collision volume in here. All right, let's dive in there. In our dop net, I want to set up three solvers, one static solver for the collisions, one RBD solver for the ice cube, and finally a flip solver for the fluid. And to execute all these three solvers and merge their results, in the end, we're going to need a merge node into which all the solvers will go. And all of those solvers will be affected by gravity. So we can append a gravity to that merge as well. Now, let's start with the static solver for the collision geometry. And that's going to be done by simply dropping down a static object, which will wire into the merge. So in my SOP path, what I can do is either point the solver directly to a SOP. It's going to be used as a collision object, in our case, the OBJ merge, or with a small expression, I can set this up to point to an input slot that will wire in here. And I want to set it to the second input slot. That's usually the input with the ID one. So let's dive in there. And that's one of these expressions that I always keep handy and copy because I can never memorize it. So it's this back tick up input path, then pointing up one level and pointing to the second input slot, the one with the ID one. 
and then closing with a back tick. Let's take this, copy it, and under collisions, let's set up the collisions to use volume collisions and use a volume sample with a division method set to by size and set it to the exact same size as I did with the VDB that I created. If you remember, when we go up one level, here is the VDB we created using this voxel size and it's being piped into the dotnet into the last input slot here, one with the ID3. We can set this up in our static object by going down here and setting our proxy volume to exactly this slot like so. So when we highlight this here and let's uncheck display geometry but display collision guide we can see we now are getting this volume as our collision source. So basically what we did here is we set up volumetric collisions for the rest of our simulation. If we hit play now nothing much should happen because that's just a static object and although it's being affected by gravity as it's static it won't move down and we might enable real-time toggle now for later. Save this and work on our RBD sim for the ice cube. Dropping down a rigid body solver which will wire into the merge here and then also an RBD object, which we're going to use to create the object we're going to simulate. It goes into the first slot. So the SOP path, let's just paste this expression, point it to the third input slot, I think. Just highlight this. Yes, that's the ice cube here. And you see, it's already created at the very first frame, which I don't want because I want the fluid to settle a bit. And after a few frames, we can create the ice cube and let it drop in there. So instead of having this created with this expression on the first frame, let's control shift click in here and manually enter the fifth frame as a creation frame. Let's just drop this down here. And under physical, let's check the parameters. I think I did not change much there. Also, let's go to collisions and bullet data because I'm going to use bullet solver here. And let's set the geometry representation to be a box. Next, let's go to the rigid body solver again, drag this down here. And we're going to use bullet. So let's just go over these settings. I'm not sure if I changed much. Just let me check. What I did here is I increased the number of substeps to 16. Let's save this, select the output here and let this run again. Okay, so that is definitely not working here. So let's check our static object here and in the bullet data here, let's set this geometry representation to be concave. So this should have taken care of this concave area here being represented in our bullet solver for collisions. So let's reset and re-simulate And yes, we can now see this ice cube being dropped in here and wiggling around a bit, which is fine for now. Okay, finally, let's set up the fluids, the flip simulation. And for that, we're going to need two nodes. One is the flip object and one is the flip solver. I'm going to wire that object in there and the solver into the merge. Immediately, we'll be greeted by ginormous particles. So the first thing we're going to do in the flip object is dial back the particle separation to 0 0.0005, really small. Let's hit escape on that because that's going to create a rather large volume and set our sub path again using this expression here. Let's just copy it over to our very first slot. That's the one with the ID 0. So now we can zoom in and we can see a bunch of tiny particles forming this liquid volume here. Let's increase the jitter scale a tiny bit so that wiggles around those particles. And now let's dial in our flip solver here. So what I found useful through a bit of trial and error is increasing the substeps to four and four, making sure the solver runs four substeps always. And also in the volume motion tab, setting the velocity transfer to swirly kernel. Under the hood, what that does is it switches a certain part of the simulation to a newer method called fine particles in cell, which results in less noise in your simulation, yielding more of that stringy viscous behavior rather than this droplet behavior that you've seen in flip for a long time, which is why flip traditionally has been used more for large scale simulations such as oceans or rivers than as small scale simulations like this as a splash. However, using the swirly kernel, we get rid of this noisy droppy behavior, resulting in a more stringy viscous behavior of our fluid. One last thing before we hit simulate on this that I want to do is go up one level and on the dot net here in the simulation tab, scale the time. So I want this to run a good bit slower. And I had good success with a scaling factor of 0.25. That means we're running four times as slow as this would be in real time. All right, now let's save this, highlight our dot net. And before we hit simulate, let's go to the caching tab and increase our cache memory. So it makes sure we are caching the whole simulation into RAM. All right, save this and hit play. And after what feels like an eternity, we are greeted by this, a really nice splash going up and a bit outwards to the sides. And I'm kind of liking it, so let's roll with it and mesh it. And for that, I only want those points in here, not the collision geometry, not the ice cube geometry. And to get those, I'll just go to the object merge tab. And instead of merging everything, I just want to merge the flip object one. That's how I call this object, resulting in those points here. 
Now to turn this into a surface, I could either build a small tree using BDBs, or I could use the built-in particle fluid surface, which under the hood does the same thing. So let's wire this in here and make sure we dial in the particle separation as in our simulation. So let's just in the flip object, copy this by right clicking on it, going to copy parameter and going back to our particle fluid surface, right clicking on this particle simulation and pasting as a relative reference. So when you click on this, it A takes forever to calculate and B has now the same value as our simulation. So let's highlight the particle fluid surface here, which already looks kind of nice and which you can dial in to your liking to get your desired look. Let's just drag this down a bit. And in my case, I went to the filtering tab and checked dilate as well as smooth. And in here, I increased the smoothing iterations to four. And as a final step, as this is a highly refractive mesh, I just added normals, which I set to be point normals. And then using an attribute blur, I smoothed out not only the position, but also the normals, just one iteration. And that is how I built the fluid splash for the rendering tutorial. Again, I by no means claim to be an expert in flip simulations. So if you guys have any hints on improving this workflow or even speeding it up, making it quicker, I'd be highly intrigued to get to know your techniques. So let me know in the comments. And if you want to get hints on how to shade light and render this, you might want to head over to our Patreon and support us. And to everyone already supporting us, a huge thanks to you. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. With a very special thank you going out to Parasol Island, Gearbox Studio Quebec, Encore VFX, Important Looking Pirates, Chris Eber, and Rafik Anadol. Thanks so much, guys. And with that, as always, it's cheers and goodbye.